So coupled with the concept of buoyancy comes this idea of the apparent weight. First of all, what is weight? Well, when you have a body, that body is subject to the force of gravity pulling it down. And the weight represents whatever force you have to apply in order to counteract the forces of gravity. Now, this situation becomes a little different if your body is submerged underwater. You still have the same mg, but because part of that force is now supported by the buoyancy force, whatever weight you have to apply here becomes less in order to hold it in place because the buoyancy force partially cancels out the gravity. So that's why we call this the apparent weight. And associated with the apparent weight, they talk about this apparent mass by dividing it by g. So here, again, we have a complete free body diagram. So forces is equal to zero. We have our apparent weight minus my iron plus the buoyancy force. They want the mass of the unknown liquid and that we can get from our buoyancy force because the buoyancy force is equal to mass of the fluid displaced times g. Whatever we have left over here is mass of the iron times g minus the apparent mass quote unquote times g. All the g goes away so that maybe that's why they invented this thing called apparent mass. So out of the water we know it's 390 grams. In the fluid, it's a little less. So the difference would be the mass of the fluid displaced. In part B, they want the volume of the iron because that's going to help us find the volume of the fluid to get the density. The volume of the iron, of course, is my mass of the iron divided by my density of iron. And if you look at table 14.1, we have iron, 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 iron is right here. For the mass, we use the real mass, of course. Don't forget to multiply by 1 over 1,000 to get kilograms. So the volume of the iron is that number. Now moving on to part C, right beside our table 14.1. We want to find the density of the mysterious fluid which is going to be the mass of the fluid displaced divided by the volume that's displacing it, which is the volume of the iron, as we found out. This is my 39.5 grams, again, dividing by 1,000. And then that number we got from last part of the question. And we get our answer. Looking at all the various liquid available, Seems like this one is the closest. I mean, you won't get exactly because as you measure mass, there might be some uh, amount of uncertainty. So again, anytime with buoyancy, as long as you're clear which volume, which mass you're talking about, everything is going to be quite easy.